Well, look what I got in the mail. Uh, I got some boards. Um, I'd forgotten that I uh, bought the uh, fast shipping on these boards. Normally when you buy boards from China, um, I've been paying uh, $9.95 for 10 boards. And then I get the standard shipping, which is not another $10. So for about $20, uh, you get your, that's the total cost of your PC boards. Um, so if you take the PC board cost plus shipping, it's about $2 a board, not a dollar a board, not $2 a board. Now these particular boards, um, I found on a site that was having a special that was uh, $2 for the boards. Uh, and since the boards were only uh, $2 for all of them, not just to each, but for all of them $2, um, I went ahead and I paid for the uh, fast shipping, which was $18. So for the same price, 20 bucks, I got them in three days. That's just insane in my mind. Um, so anyway, uh, they came very fast. Um, I paid for five boards and they gave me six boards, which is great. Sometimes they always get, a, get an extra one if they don't screw up. Um, so let's take a look at one of the boards here. Um, I should put a different lens on this camera so I can zoom in a little farther. Um, but uh, yeah, they look great. They they should look uh, uh, just like um, just like our little uh, paper dolls here. Uh, I can match them up. Um, here are the uh, here are the registers. So the my printer seems to be able to print one to one. Uh, imaging just fine. They're always the right size. Um, and uh, this is the one that we haven't built yet. This is the uh, the ALU uh, that would uh, piggyback on these two registers and then uh, hang over and go down. So uh, still need to work on work on that design. But it, we do have this design. Um, I haven't um, um, ordered any parts. <laughs> I forgot that I was going to get them so quick. Um, so I have enough parts to do the LEDs. I have uh, LEDs. If you haven't bought LEDs lately, um, I bought 1,000 uh, LEDs for I think $3.55 free shipping. So LEDs are free. <laughs> uh, the um, resistors I've been getting uh, locally at all at the flea market and uh, swap meets and there's a junk store in town uh, where I can get a reel of parts for a dollar so I get you know somewhere between two and five thousand parts for a dollar um, and so I've just been accumulating parts and I have a good selection of things so anyway I have enough uh, to populate the um, uh, indicators and we can try out the little um, I, I should show you one of those parts out of the microscope uh, the little um, uh, array, uh, resistor array, where there's four resistors all in one package. It's about the size of a 1206, but there's actually four resistors in it. Um, but I do need to order some parts, get them from DigiKey, probably. I think uh, the latches and the uh, tri-state buffers and stuff are going to be in the you know 15 to 20 cent range, something like that. Um, the only expensive part here will be the RAM. Probably can't pay a couple dollars for the RAM. Hopefully, I can find that. Um, I kind of quickly just designed this just to kind of get my feet wet to see if you know I'm coming on the right track or not. I didn't. Uh, I expected to, to throw these away, thinking, okay, this is just thinking purposes, making making sure what I'm doing makes sense or not. But I, I don't know. I think they look pretty good. I think we, we might be able to use them. Um, maybe the program counter will need a rev too. Um, but I'm expecting the other ones to be okay. So then the register should be, you know, should have been easy that I won't have any errors on that. So I oh, could try those out. And uh, yeah, so I'll take them in the garage, uh, cut them up, uh, cut them with bandsaw. Um, I have uh, 50 thousandths uh, of silk screen width traces here. 50 thousandths is about the width of my um, saw blade. So basically I'll cut through that white, um, sand them a little bit to make them uh, uh, nice and smooth, and I'll come back and we can uh, start playing with Legos and uh, seeing what it looks like. All right, uh, here out, out of the bandsaw, uh, I think this is going to be, this is going to get uh, noisy very quickly, uh, so I'll probably uh, mute the uh, 
mute the audio and uh, maybe uh, overdub it with uh, some some uh, audio. Um, anyway, uh, here we go. Okay, so uh, I used a little pusher block there. I don't want to go my finger next to the blade. So, um, so the next step will be to uh, sort of uh, sand these off and uh, make them smooth. So we'll do that over here. So I have a. Uh, uh, six inch wide, uh, uh, 48 inch uh, belt sander. Um, this is from Harbor Freight. Uh, it's actually a really good one. They have some cheapy ones, but if you get the big six inch one, uh, this, one this one's made pretty nice. Uh, the uh, bandsaw that I was using is a Grizzly, uh, and it's a it's a very nice machine. It's a two speed, has two belts. Uh, you can change the belt to two different pulleys. Um, so I will. And some parts over here. I'm going to put on hearing protection because this one's noisy. Right, those look good. Let's take them inside and uh, play with them. I think you can. Uh, I've got it zoomed in here a little bit. You can see these. So we have our uh, our register. Uh, here's our second register. Uh, program counter and memory, and then our indicators. 
So we can play with these. We could put the, uh, uh, let's see, ground goes to ground. If we uh, soldered these together, then we would have a register with an indicator. Um, so remember that this internal um, space here isn't needed if all you're going to do is talk to the bus. Um, the first chip is a latch, so when you write data in, it's stored in this chip. And it's always outputting. The output is enabled all the time on this chip. So the this intersection here is always enabled. So whatever is in this chip will be displayed on the LEDs. Um, if you want to take that back out to the bus, uh, then you would enable this tri-state buffer and it brings the data back around and sends it out the bus. The way that it's used, say, for the um, uh, ALU is that uh, since these internal uh, lines are always enabled, then uh, register A and register B, those those lines will always be active. And as you put the other card in, then, then those will feed directly into the ALU chips. It will perform the operation, and then the output of the ALU will always be active. And then all you have to do is then follow that with a tri-state buffer if you want to put that back onto the bus. So anyway, um, so I think the first thing to do is uh, maybe load up some of these little uh, uh, LED indicators, since I can do that uh, here today. And uh, the, the other thing I can do is order some parts. Um, uh, I need to order all the TTL parts. There's some uh, miscellaneous bypass caps and stuff. If I have all of that, um, all I need to do is order the active parts and, and we can uh, sort of play with this. I also need to get a, uh, a strip, uh, what's it called? It's a strip PC board. I forget what they call them. It's just a hundred mil center strips. And the strange thing about those is I had to pay about, I think I paid about, oh gosh, maybe three dollars a board? Something like, I had them on order. Uh, about three dollars a board. Um, so they're a single-sided, really awful quality PC board with the the holes are not plated through. There's no silk screen. There's no nothing. It's just bare copper. They're just really, really ugly cards. And I could have manufactured my own um, strip boards much, much cheaper. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, uh, the the real downside of uh, um, Eagle is that you can only do a hundred millimeters maximum size board without starting to pay for it. Um, KiCad or KiCad or wh whatever the other one is allows you to do any size board. Um, I haven't ever designed a board on that CAD system, but uh, maybe I will in this case to, to, to build one long uh, uh, back plane uh, for this project. And then I can just buy those for two dollars for ten boards. Uh, and uh, might as well do that. Um, probably should start selling them. I could make nicer boards and undersell the cheapy ones. Uh, I don't know what's going on there. Except I, I have to pay shipping. That's my big gripe about China. They, they basically, I don't know, the government subsidizes them or something. They, they get to ship things for free. I can buy things from China cheaper than I can actually just mail them in the mail. It cost me about, you know, a minimum. I, I used to sell little components and it would cost me about, um, I think, about three dollars and seventy-five cents just to put them in the post, and you could get them for like two dollars free shipping from China. It made no sense at all. Uh, we have a really bad trade deal with China as far as uh, the postal service is concerned. Anyway, uh, so I'll get some parts on order, and uh, the next time we'll maybe have some uh, some things to play with and see if it see if it actually works or not.